when you do a painting. You're on a wrong track if you are at the very beginning of the painting are sitting and wondering what kind of color to use. I want to have an impulse at the very beginning. And when Pretension asked me to make colors, it was quite clear for me what to do. I've chosen colors that can carry information and association and language. I didn't choose them from aesthetic perspective. I wanted the colors to come from something much more private, something much more to do with history and ideas. I want to put a stone in people's shoe. They look at the color and they get this weird word. That's like having a stone in your shoe that you kind of have to adjust your walking against. So I'll start. I think it's been the color that followed me for the longest time. The magic point about this kind of rose is that you really look close. It could actually arise out of the opposite. It could arise out of a brown, out of a red brown that you add white and then suddenly, instead of just being mud, something rose grows out of this brown color. Actually, chocolate mills has a lot to do with the Alstad rose. I think that they are like brothers and sisters. If you look close into the chocolate milk, you will also sense that there is something rosa in it. The weird thing about brown is that it's a color that can have all other colors inside. You know, if you have chocolate alone, chocolate is not that interesting. It's the moment you add sugar. And if you add milk, the taste comes out. And this is a bit the same with this color. It's a, it's a brownish with something white in it. Whenever somebody asks me to do something that's a bit outside my field, I always think, do I have an immediate answer? I don't want to sit down and study what to do. I want to have a clear impulse. And then I want to work. I can work a long time with this impulse. I is the Japanese word for indigo. It's the only color that has like a real horizon. You think that it's black at the bottom and blue in the beginning, but it's the other way around. You have to translate this into a chair. If you're going to do it the technical way, you're going to choose something that's very close to black, but you will never get that feeling. You will just have either black or blue. So my indigo is more towards blue, but it's as close as you can get. Chevalier orange is about conspiracy. It's about aristocracy. It's even about in breed, but only in breed because you can't reach that color. So on the road of trying to reach this very special orange, people get in breed. And that points back to aristocracy and to conspiracy and just, you know, disappearing into a secret door with a very special orange suitcase. That's it. This orange is also a bit towards earth, but if you, if you take that orange towards the earth, too much earth colors, it breaks. The Egyptian is yellow. Actually, in the beginning, I wanted it to be like Italian yellow, like one that somebody digged out of the ground. My Egyptian yellow is a bit like e Egypt. Egypt is also about now, and it's also about what it used to be. So this yellow has this tipping point of being towards one point and coming from one point. It's still a color, but it's almost also earth again. I think a painter can't have favorite colors. Also, even the best painters are not necessarily experts in colors. They are expert in pulling ideas through colors and speaking with ideas in colors. People who are expert in mixing or looking at colors one by one, that's something else. Evren is a purple, and Evren is also the name of my wife. It's not necessarily her favorite color, but everybody around her, whenever she will turn around, they would say purple. It's purple that she talks with when she's in a supermarket. If she looks, if she smiles when she sleeps at night, definitely she's dreaming about purple. If she looks at me and she looks specially happy, it's not me she's seeing, she's seeing purple. Hüsün is a Turkish word. But Hüsün means to long for something that is not there anymore, something that used to be. This kind of green 
also as the boss in Istanbul. My color is a little bit more sharp. It has a little bit more teeth than the, than the color of the bosses in Istanbul. Because those bosses have been so much in the sun. So I imagine they used to be like my color. But being in the sun, they turned like that. Opium Red is all about Shanghai. It's about Shanghai before 48, where the city was divided into Russian, French, German sectors where there was all these small narrow alleys and then there was another alley and another one and another one and it was like kind of a labyrinth of small streets. This is my imagination about Shanghai before 48. So of all the colors Trieste has the best story. I have never been in Trieste. Somebody once told me there's a lot of wind and when you walk on the street you have to kind of pull a rope so you don't fly away. I always love that. And I always wanted to go to Trieste. I will never go. So this will also be some kind of impossible city. The special thing about this blue is, first of all, it's been used so much in art history. Why? It's because it's cheating the eyes. I mean, if something is bluish or more violet, it's very much a different. Somebody can explain and say it's not such a mystery, but this color should stay in the world of mystery. I think it's, it's all about experience. Narratives are different in different cultures. And Trieste is for me some, something very different from you. But still you are going to be in this kind of triangle of experience between the form, the color and the word.